Good morning. <clears throat> so here's your starter. So if you think back to what you were doing last lesson, express splitting part, splitting fractions back up into partial fractions, and this is a nice straightforward one. So just get back in it, getting back in. Have a pause the video and have a go at this on a piece of paper. Okay, here's your solution. So really nice. So a is one, b is minus one. So we're going to move it on with the partial fractions today where we're going to look at the second type. Now there are, are only two types of partial fractions in A-level maths. The ones that we were looking at last lesson and the ones that we're going to look at today. So the difference is the ones we're going to look at today have a repeated factor in the denominator. So they will have something squared. Now in A-level maths, it will never be a greater power than something squared. So you do, you have a different setup. So when you go to split something up into partial fractions where one of the factors or both of the factors could be repeated, what you do is when you set it up, so here, this is just, a, the x plus p is a straightforward linear factor. So that just has your a over it. And then you deal with the repeated factor. So what you do is you have another constant, in this case b, over the bit that's being repeated. And then you have an extra constant c over the bit and it's repeated. So that's how you set it up. What you don't do, which would be really tempting, is to write this as x plus p times x plus two, sorry, x plus q times x plus q, and then split it up over x plus p, x plus q, x plus q. You don't do that, right? It has to be something over the inner bit of the repeat and then something over the full repeat. And then I just put a little reminder here about adding fractions together with the common denominators. Now, obviously, this is really simple. You've been doing this for years and years, years. Just a quick reminder. You could, of course, get a common denominator of 56 here, but that's not your lowest common denominator. What you've got here is 2 is a factor of 4. So your common denominator or your lowest common denominator isn't the denominator's just multiply together. Although that would work, you would just have to do cancelling down at the end. Your lowest common denominator is the 4 and the 7 multiplied together, 28. Because 2 is a factor of 4. Now, it's not hugely important when you were doing number fractions because you would just cancel that down at the end. You know, you would have got 110 over 56 and then you would have just divided by two but it can make life a lot easier with algebraic fractions so do bear that in mind when you're getting your common denominator so example one oh sorry it's on the skew here there right example one you're going to express x plus one over x minus one x minus two all squared in partial fractions. So, sorry, I'm just trying to straighten that up a little bit. Mm, I haven't really done it. But... Okay, so you spot, so this is, when, you, when your questions say partial fractions, you're now thinking, let's look at the factors in the denominator. Are they just both linear or is one repeated? Now, you can clearly see that the x minus two is being repeated. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to set it up with something over the x minus one, something over the inner bit of the repeat, I'm not gonna give up on trying to straighten this, something over the inner bit of the repeat, and then something over the full repeat. It's not really worked, has it? But I'm making it worse now. because I haven't made a video for a couple of days. Right, sorry about that. So 
as soon as I've set that up, I'm now going to add these together. Now, what I don't do is just multiply the denominators together. So I don't want a common denominator of x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 2 all squared. I don't want that. It would work, but my life would be harder. What I want, to, what I spot is that x minus 2 is a factor of x minus 2 all squared. So my common denominator will be exactly what it is here. x minus 1 times x minus 2 all squared. So to get that, I will need to multiply my a by x minus 2 all squared. I'll need to multiply my b by x minus 1 and x minus 2 to get x minus 1, x minus 2 all squared on the denominator. And lastly, I'll need to multiply my c by x minus 1. So I'll just delete that. So that's my first step. So this equals that. You know that if you've got identical denominators, you can then just compare the numerators. So that's the purpose of doing that. If I'd made this have a common denominator of x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 2 all squared, I wouldn't have been able to have done this step. I would have had to have done extra work to get there. So I'm now going to compare my denominators. Now I'm going to use the same thing, the same skill I was using last time, where I'm going to choose values of x to eliminate it. But you will notice that with this type, you're going to need a different strategy at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to spot, I'm going to need x equals 2 to zap that one and x equals 1 to zap that one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put x equals to 1. And if x equals to 1, that disappears, that disappears. So I'm just going to be left with 1 plus 1, so 2, 1 minus 2, so negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1. So 2 is 1a, so a is 2. I'm now going to substitute x equals 2 in, so 2 plus 1, and x equals 2, this disappears, this disappears, so you're just going to be left with 2 take away 1 times c, so c is 3. Right, you've, you've sort of exhausted the two elimination things that you could do, and now there's a choice of methods. Lots of people have different ways of doing this. So I'm going to use one method in this example and I'm going to use another method in the second example that I'm going to do. And it's really up to you which you do. So we're using this here, we're using this expression here. I need to be able to find B, but I do know A and C. So what I'm going to do as my first method is I'm going to compare coefficients in this identity. Now, having a look at this, you can see on this side, you are going to get an x squared there and an x squared there. And you've got no x squared on the left hand side. So I'm, because I want to find b, I've decided I'm going to have a look at the x squared term. So if I look at the x squared term on the left, there's a zero. If I look at the x squared term here, I'm going to get an x squared here. So a lots of x squared plus b lots of x squared. There's no x squared there. So it's just going to be on the left hand side. No x squared is 1a plus 1b. Now I know that a equals 2. So if a equals 2, b must be minus 2. So that has instantly found me b. I didn't have to use the x squared coefficient. I could have used the number term. Go, okay, I could have used the number term so that I could have used the constant term there. I don't know, oh, I've got a lot of rectangles here. So, and I, but that's slightly more complicated. If I go back and look at the constant term again, I'm just show you what I could have done. I don't need to do this at all. I've got one here. I'm going to have minus two squared a, so four a. 2b minus c. So that's a bit more complicated to have worked it out, but I could have done it. You know, I could have ended up and, and got it that way. 
but I was absolutely fine using the x squared. So I've now got b is minus 2. So I'm going to go back with my a, b and c. a is 2, b is minus 2 and c is 3. And I'm going to put them back over those denominators. So that is your answer. Expressed in partial fractions. It's going to look like that. Right, example two. So exactly the same. You've got a repeated factor here, your x plus one, your x plus two. So you set it up instantly like that. Remember your a over the inner bit, b over the repeated bit, and c over the one with your linear factor. You're then going to add these together on the right hand side to get your common denominator. And remember, you want your common denominator to be the same as this. So x plus 1 all squared times x plus 2. So you add them together. Just check that you're confident about adding those algebraic fractions together. And then you can compare your numerators. Now, again, I'm keen to make things disappear. So you can see I'm going to have to do x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 2 to make them eliminate. So when x equals negative 1, substitute in. So when x equals negative 1, you're going to get 2 here, goes, goes, you're going to get 1b. So b is going to be 2. You're then going to put in x is negative 2. So if you substitute in x equals negative 2, you're going to get negative 1 here. Disappears, disappears. You're going to get negative 1 squared, so 1c. So you're going to get negative 1 is c. And now you've got to find what a is. So the one with both things. So both have disappeared. Now... We could compare coefficients, so it would have been quite straightforward to have looked at the coefficient of x squared. 0 is a plus c, and you know what c is, so a is going to be 1. Or one, another strategy people like to use here is they like to let a equal 0. Letting a equal 0 is another way, really, of saying I'm going to look at the constant term, the number term. Sorry, x equals zero, let x equals zero. So if you let x equals zero, you're gonna get five equals one times two a plus two b plus one c. So if you let x equals zero, you then substitute in your values for b and c. So you're going to end up with a equals 1. And then you put your numerators back in. So that's what we're learning for today. So here are your questions. Now, again, I've taken these from the textbook. So, so question 1, question 2. And then quest the, the extensions today, so the extension questions, you are going to have to factorise your denominators first. So this is obviously quite, this doesn't have a repeated factor, but if you take out a factor of x squared, x squared is your repeated factor. And here, factorise this, and then you'll notice that you'll get another term repeated. And here are your answers. So well done. See you tomorrow.